When the Shared Resources Joint Solutions Program, or SOGS for short, started implementation in 2017, little or no work had been done to link gender and social inclusion with environment and natural resources issues. Conversations around gender and gender-responsive actions were non-existent and not included in the narrative in either countries in the Guyanas. But today, things are quite different. Through a multi-stakeholder approach, WWF and IUCN have designed and fostered the implementation of better practices, using a gender and social inclusion lens grounded in the fundamental and cross-cutting human rights-based approach. Uh, the program has a large component on gender and social inclusion and it focuses mainly on creating the space to allow for um, increased participation in the decision-making processes for um, a natural resource and environmental governance. Our focus has mainly been on capacity building and uh, building capacities within uh, CSOs, uh, those that are partnering with us in the, in the Guyanas, um, including um, indigenous communities and um, government organizations, uh, and particularly also ensuring that we, um, we allow for gender mainstreaming into um, initiatives at the CSO level or at the government level. These efforts enabled increased participation in decision-making processes for natural resources and environment governance for men, women, boys and girls, for vulnerable groups and indigenous communities, for young people and for the population at large. The program intervened across Guyana and Suriname with different country-based approaches. In Guyana, it rolled out a two-fold approach, at a national level working on policy and strengthening the capacity of natural resource-based institutions like the Environmental Protection Agency and key ministries to mainstream gender and integrate gender-responsive actions into projects and programs. For me, that workshop is one of the most memorable training that I've been on um, in my career as someone that works in this sector. Um, I really was mind blown by the, the story of the tree samplings that you got, that I think it was in Africa, whereby they were surveyed a group of women and men and they asked them to list the trees that they found to be important to their livelihood. and. The two different lists, the lists were completely different and what you found was the list that the women completed, there were, there were trees that you needed to carry out your livelihood and medicine and food and things like that. So I always think back of that example because if you didn't, had, if you didn't do the work of engaging women, you wouldn't have gotten that information. And it's really instrumental that women make up half of the population, you have to include them in your project, not only because it looks good, but scientifically it makes your project projects better. We are developing a developing country and you have society would place a lot of emphasis on male. We no longer in that era. So we have to get our female on board, working as equal partners. So, in terms of the environment, it must not be dominated by male alone. We must have female, and they must be recognized for their contribution in sustaining the environment. The program also strengthened the capacity of local partners, such as indigenous communities and the University of Guyana, where course modules were redesigned to transfer key competencies on environment and social justice, and on ethics to address the root causes of environmental degradation and conservation. The intent with that really is to have all graduates go into the uh, sector, go into the industry, whether they're working with a, a forestry extractor, a gold mining company, whether they're working with the regulators, working with the environmental um, uh, assessment uh, type company, uh, whatever they are doing, that they are uh, aware of 
the issues that can emerge when you're dealing with the diversity of human beings that exist in the environment that they're working. And to be able to uh, take actions and, 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 and influence uh, decisions that will accommodate that diversity. And, and ensure that the decisions that are taken, actions that are taken, are uh, at the end of the day just to everyone that's involved, including the, the non-human element, uh, the environment in, in, a, in a broad context. Uh, Activities and initiatives such as the Gender and Environment Forum, the Wapishian Youth Conference, and the Wupanuni Indigenous Women Conference brought together multiple actors and created an enabling environment and space for conversations among the intersectionality of gender and the environment. Over 500 persons from various backgrounds, mostly Indigenous women and youths, joined these events. And I think now is the time that we should be stepping forward so that our voices can be heard as women, as Indigenous women to stand up for our rights, right, and, and to, I mean, for the world to recognize us too, that we have a strong um, rights for indigenous women. This is the time for us to step forward and encourage others to step forward. We've got to have a new generation. We've got resources. We've got natural resources we know as indigenous people, right? We've come a long way now. We have role models, people who stood up, women, and who have served our communities, and now is our responsibility to go forward. So how do we build capacity? How do we enable the participation of people so that the decisions that are made today have this view which is goes beyond today? It's views which are 10 years from now, 20 years from now. And how do we make the right decisions for those who are most vulnerable, the youth, the women, the, the less represented people within our society. And the Shared Resources Joint Solutions is really very much about building capacity and enabling participation of people. In Suriname, the focus has been mainly on capacity building among the SOJS partners towards a better integration of gender equality into existing programs, activities, opportunities. This was done in partnership with Projecto, who actively engaged a number of civil society organizations and government representatives in Paramaribo, Suriname. It was a bit new, maybe for the most of the conservation organizations here in Suriname. It's like a kind of new thing we had to take into account. Yeah. Initially, we, were, uh, we didn't know a lot about gender. So uh, we got some training and we also included the gender in our code of conduct. And uh, in our work, we also started to use it more. The challenge is uh, especially culturally based because if you work with the forest dependent livelihoods, the people have traditions and often they are very stick to the traditions. So the challenge is to try to make a good infantry up and for the people and try to slightly change the situation for more equity and equality. How do we um, focus on gender but still respect their culture? Because that's, that, that's not our goal. Our goal is not to bring Western culture to their um, way of living, but to kind of create an, an equality. We have to figure out if it's an injustice for them. So I think that's something that I think we still need to talk about a little bit more, um, and it is, which is also a reason why SRGS is so great, because you get different organizations, but we also have the tribal community, and they come together and we can discuss the way we approach different um, problems and different, um, also just opportunities. A tool was also developed to support gender mainstreaming into projects and plans, including government-led initiatives. Those, those of you who have been part of our gender uh, uh, capacity building trajectory, you know, you know where we start and uh, how long we take to make people really understand that it's not about being men or being uh, female, not about women's rights, and that at the end of 
three hours, you understand that it's a prison. It's a construct of, 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 of human beings. It's a, it's a, that imprisons, imprisons us all and, and hampers our freedom to be who we are. So. Over 120 participants from varying backgrounds, including government, civil society, and community representatives participated in the events and activities, building their understanding on gender tied to human rights issues and opportunities across environment and natural resource sectors. As we evolved over time, uh, gender, um, its understanding, the intersectionalities around gender, um, how it impacts various uh, sectors in our society became clearer and so um, it was taking an ethical approach to development in terms of how do we ensure that we are um, working for the highest impact. It is through these activities and initiatives that SRGS created the space to understand gender equality, equity, human rights and most vulnerable groups within the environment and natural resources sector in Guyana and Suriname. This was more than just a donor requirement and in fact, building on the momentum gained, SRGS partners are now ensuring those guiding principles will continue to live on. This goes beyond the scope of the program. It is a huge step forward towards the protection of vital ecosystem resources and towards the empowerment of both men and women.